One of my passions and one of the big reasons for starting my channel five years ago is helping you to save money on makeup while still looking incredible. So today I'm rounding up 25 of the best drugstore alternatives and dupes that I found in 2023. These are high quality products that cost a fraction of the price of similar hyped up high end makeup. So if that sounds good to you guys, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So the first dupe that I found is for the NARS blushes. These cost $32, so they're definitely not inexpensive. And I can't completely take credit for this dupe because one of the colors I actually saw on Risa Does Makeup's channel, and she was talking about the shade Dolce Vita from NARS. And the dupe that she found was the Revlon Powder Blush in the shade Apricute. So when you look at these two side by side, the Revlon one actually looks a little bit more pink while the NARS Dolce Vita has a little bit more warmth behind it. But when you actually see them swatched out, the Revlon looks almost identical to the NARS and it also applies exactly the same on your cheeks. I can't tell the difference once it's actually on my skin. And it makes a lot more sense why they called the shade Apricute because it really does have that warmth to it, but yet it kind of looks pink in the pan. So I thought this was an incredible dupe that she had found, especially because they're only $9.99. So I started doing some digging on my own and I found another dupe for a different NARS blush. So this one is one of my favorite shades from NARS. It's impassioned. It's a really light baby pink. And the Revlon dupe for it is called Rosy Rendezvous. So it's also a very light, dusty kind of baby pink shade. It's absolutely beautiful, especially if you have a fair to light skin tone. It's a little bit more on the cool tone side. I wear this one so often and I was really excited to find a drugstore dupe that is almost identical. And like I said, this Revlon formula is outstanding. I don't always love everything that Revlon comes out with. And aside from a viral product here and there, like their glass shine lipsticks that completely blew up on TikTok, Revlon gets mostly ignored by influencers, but I think they do have some really great stuff and these blushes are no exception. Speaking of which, there's another Revlon dupe that I found, and this is actually for their highlighters. And it's in the shade Daybreak Glimmer. And I thought this was an exact identical dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amri highlighter, which was super popular years ago. It's been discontinued now. So many people love this one and I have, believe it or not, gotten requests over the years to find a really good dupe for this. And I think that the Revlon one is spot on. Both formulas are made in Italy. They're a baked formula, so they're really, really smooth. Even looking at the product in the pan, both of them have sort of a wave pattern in them. And the first time that I swatched these, I was blown away, not only by how close the color is, but also just in terms of the formula and how they feel pretty much identical. So I would say, while I will be sharing a lot of drugstore alternatives, this one for me was really a straight up dupe. I honestly cannot tell the difference. So if you missed out on the Amrezi highlighter, now's your chance, just grab the Revlon one. It is so much less expensive and it's exactly the same thing. The next dupe is for the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch press powder that came out recently. This retails for $38. I have it in the shade Cherry Blossom. And the dupe that I found for this, it's not really a dupe. This is more of an alternative product. This is the I'm Mimi Pink Blur Powder. This is only $12. And I bought these both around the same time. I was looking for a pink setting powder that'll help to brighten, especially under the eye area. And as I was using both of these, I realized that I loved the I'm Mimi one so much better. I think the powder itself is just a lot smoother on the skin. And that's super important to me because my skin is dry. So I wanna make sure that any powder that I'm using doesn't look cakey. And I was really impressed with the airbrushed finish that the I'm Mimi powder gave my skin. The Huda Beauty one is really nice too. Don't get me wrong, I like that powder, but I just felt like the I'm Mimi was a little bit better quality. It just made my skin look extra flawless compared to the Huda Beauty. And it's so much less expensive. So out of the two, I reach for the I'm Mimi one every single time. I recently picked up the High Glam Concealer from Natasha Denona, and I love this formula. It has a really nice thin serum-like texture, and it looks really good on my dry, more mature under eyes. But as I was using it, I felt like it reminded me a lot of the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. This also has that really thin, lightweight texture, but it's nice and hydrating on my dry under eyes. And I think the coverage level is also very similar 
the flower beauty just looks so smooth and I like that it dries down rather quickly because it doesn't have a chance to crease and it lasts the entire day I do like the color that I have in the Natasha Denona a little bit better than the flower beauty but the flower one does come in other shades so I'm gonna try one shade up next time and see if maybe that one is a little bit better of a match for me but otherwise I have no complaints I think the formulas and the performance of both of these is just so incredibly similar I recently tried out some of the new Fenty shadow sticks and I really liked the formula I felt like they were very creamy they go on smoothly they are really long lasting on my eyes as well but I couldn't help but compare them to the new Milani eyeshadow sticks because I feel like those are just as creamy just as smooth and they're a lot less expensive the Fenty shadow sticks are $25 each while the Milani are less than half the price at $11 each so I can really get two of the Milani for the price of one of the Fenty and I think the Milani are just as long lasting on my eyes they don't crease at all they don't budge once you put them on they stay in place all day so I think there are really amazing eyeshadow sticks at the drugstore and unless there's a specific color that you like in the Fenty that you can't find in the Milani I think it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to spend the extra cash Natasha Denona came out with a few palettes this year that really captured everyone's attention everybody was talking about them but as we all know her formulas can be really expensive usually she charges around $70 for her midi palettes so the first one that she had released was the yucca palette now I actually got a lot of comments on how I was pronouncing that people were telling me it's not yucca it's yucca however there are two different versions of that word they're spelled exactly the same way yucca like the fries is pronounced with the long u however yucca is actually a desert plant and that's what this palette was inspired by and it has the short u so i just wanted to put that out there in case anybody's thinking i'm saying it wrong i promise you it's yucca um but anyway this palette again i felt like had really mixed reviews some people really loved it other people felt like these colors just wouldn't suit their skin tone I personally loved the color story. I thought it was so interesting and unique and different, but again, it's 70 bucks. So I noticed I had another palette in my collection that was really similar, and that's the Odin's Eye Stone and Rock palette. This one is $35, so it's half the price, and I felt like it had such a similar vibe. It has those yellowy greens mixed with the neutrals, and it has some beautiful finishes. I know it's not the same formula as Natasha Denona, but I do really enjoy Odin's Eye formula. I think that their shimmer shades are really foiled, really metallic. They definitely pop on your eyes and I think their mattes are just really, really soft, very blendable, yet really pigmented. So I'm actually wearing the Stone and Rock palette in the video today and I think you can get a lot of really similar looks as you can with the Yucca palette. So if you're not sure if these colors are really for you, I think it makes a lot more sense to just spend $35 on the palette in case you don't wear it all that often compared to $70. I mean, I mean, if you know you're gonna love it, then hey, the Yucca palette is beautiful, but if you're kind of on the fence or you just don't want to spend $70 on an eyeshadow palette, then I think the Odin's Eye is a really good option. Another really popular palette from Natasha Denona this year was I Need a Nude. This one I think was just like the perfect neutral palette for a lot of people. It has both warm and cool tones. It has some rosy colors in there. It's really, really pretty. But again, if you don't wanna spend that much money on an eyeshadow palette, check out the ColourPop 1111 palette. This one, I know I've talked about this and made these comparisons before. And again, ColourPop is not the same formula, but I'm just talking color-wise. If you like this particular blend of neutrals, both the warm and the cool with those little pops of rosiness thrown in, I think this one is so incredibly similar. And even though the formula isn't exactly the same, I don't think ColourPop's formula is anything to sneeze at. I generally don't have an issue with them. And in fact, I really enjoy them a lot. So I think this is a great alternative if you've had your eye on the I Need a Nude palette. And then another palette Natasha released this year is the Xenon Midi palette. And this one I kind of regretted buying because it's an all black and white and gray palette basically. And 
and to have a 15 shade palette with basically all the same shades in it was just a little bit too much for me. I felt like I could have condensed it down into a smaller palette and that's where the ColourPop Blow and Smoke palette comes in. So mine actually says Smoke Show because that's how they originally released it and then they changed the name, but it's the same colors, same order that they're in in the palette and all of that. But I feel like this is so super similar. It's just a nine pan palette, which for me is really all I need if I'm looking for gray and black and silver. And again, I thought the formula on this one was really good. Dare I say some of the shimmers in the ColourPop are even a little bit more smooth and less glittery than the ones in the Xenon palette. So if you had your eye on the Xenon palette, but you were kind of like, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna use these colors all the time, I think Blow and Smoke is just a great alternative and it's a good way, I guess, to see if maybe you would use those colors a lot and then at some point, if you find yourself using it all the time, then it might make sense to upgrade to the bigger one. But I think at $14, it's a much better price point to kind of find that out. Uh, next up, I have a dupe for the Givenchy Prism Libre, or is it Prisme Libre? I've heard it said both ways. Um, but again, this loose powder is very expensive. It's $59, and I found that the Moira Set and Correct Loose Powder, which is only $12, is pretty much identical. This is another case where I wouldn't even say it's an alternative, it's just a straight up dupe. This one has the same colors that are in here, and by the way, there are different versions of both of these powders. So if you don't like these particular colors, they do come in other shades. But to be honest with you, once I swirl all the colors together, they pretty much just come out translucent anyway. So I'm not even sure what the colors are really correcting. But that aside, I feel like the Moira powder is so silky and smooth, possibly even slightly more than the Givenchy, but they're very close. I really don't tell a difference at all when I use both of these powders. Both of them have a really nice blur effect on my skin. Neither one of them look dry or powdery or cakey in the slightest bit. They're so finely milled. They're pretty much weightless. I absolutely love them. So I can say with conviction, do not spend $59 on the higher end powder. I think you will love the Moira powder just as much as I do. Another new release from 2023 was the Charlotte Tilbury Pinkgasm Sunset Beauty Wand. So she came out with this one, I wanna say it was around Valentine's Day last year. And this is a new shade of Pinkgasm that leans more warm and coppery while the regular Pinkgasm was a cooler tone pink. So I thought this color was beautiful and I really like Charlotte Tilbury's light wand but they're $42, which is insanely expensive for a blush. So one day around the same time that I had gotten the new Charlotte Tilbury blush, I was playing with my e.l.f. Putty Blushes, the luminous version, and I took out the shade Barbados to use, and I realized it looked so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, which I had worn the day before. So I swatched them together, and my mind was blown by how similar they were. Now again, totally different formulas going on here. The e.l.f. is more of a cream putty formula in the pot, while the Charlotte Tilbury is more of a liquid blush. And I think the Charlotte Tilbury one has just a little bit more glow than the e.l.f. does, but the color is almost exactly the same. And once you blend it out, it really does look just about identical. And the e.l.f. also gives you that glowy cheek that basically lets you skip highlighter, just like the Charlotte Tilbury one does. And it gave me an incredibly similar result and it's seven dollars so i think if you had your eye on that charlotte tilbury one for the color it's 42 bucks i mean just spend the seven and get elf's barbados and problem solved you have that beautiful rich coppery bronzy cheek for a fraction of the price also in 2023 moira released their super hyped liquid pigments and as soon as i got these i was instantly reminded of the danessa myrick's color fix liquid pigments they're so similar, except the Danessa Myricks ones are $20, the Moira are seven. So you can basically get three colors for the price of one. And just like the Danessa Myricks ones, the Moira you can use on your eyes, your cheeks, your lips. They come in both matte finishes, which I have here. They also have shimmer finishes and metallics as well. And I just love that you can use this formula anywhere. You can mix them together to create custom colors. It's just such a fun and unique product that you can really be creative with and at $7 a piece, you can just buy a whole bunch of them and create lots of custom colors and options. It's just such a fun product. So if you had your eye on those Danessa Myricks ones, just 
Check out the Moira ones first. I think you'll really, really enjoy them a lot. Rose Inks Cream Blushes are another formula that gets a lot of hype. A lot of people were talking about these over the course of the year. And I have one in the shade Foxglove that I really like, but as I was using it, I noticed that my Undone Beauty Cream Blush in the shade Rosewood was really, really similar. It's a little less than half the price and I felt like not only the color was really close, but also the formula as well. These blushes have a little bit of a thicker, more heavyweight feel, so you only need a tiny little bit. I tend to just dip my finger in the compact once, just lightly, and it's enough to do both of my cheeks. And that's true of both of these formulas. Yet, even though they start out feeling dewy, they also dry down to more of a powder finish, so you're not left with your cheeks feeling particularly Particularly sticky. I'm actually wearing the Undone blush today and I just love this formula so much. And I feel like Undone is another one of those brands that doesn't get talked about a lot, but I think they have some really great solid options in their collection. So this is another product that's definitely worth checking out and you can use these actually on your lips as well. So it's a great two in one. Charlotte Tilbury's highlighter wands have also been a super viral product next to her blushes and her contour wands. And I can see why, even though I hate the packaging of these, I feel like they start out okay, but mine always end up looking like such a mess after a while. Um, but they are just such a nice, smooth, beautiful formula. And I recently tried out these from Lottie London. These are called Cheeky Glow and they're only $9 compared to 42. And I have to say, these are also incredibly smooth. They have great pigmentation. They don't just leave like a wash of glitter on your cheeks. They actually have nice color to them. And I love how smooth they are. I feel like a lot of brands try to dupe these and they don't always get it right but I feel like Lottie London did a great job at giving us a good quality product for under $10 so if you're interested in a dupe for the highlighter wands I highly recommend these I think they're wonderful I also couldn't talk about viral products without mentioning the B Goldie drops from Drunk Elephant so first it was the bronzing drops then these came out and everybody's talking about them they sell out constantly and these are a beautiful product you can use them all over as a glowy primer. You can mix it in with a little foundation. You can just tap some on the high points of your cheek. And I like it because they're not glittery. It's like a really subtle, beautiful glow. But it's $38 for this tiny little bottle. And I found something that I like just as much and it's from Catrice. It's their all over glow tint. So this comes in a little tube for $6. So it's a lot better of a price point. And this particular shade, which is called Beaming Diamond is pretty much a spot on color dupe for the B Goldie drops. But the Catrice does come in other shades as well. They actually have a pink one. So if you don't like gold and you go more for the pink side of things, then you definitely want to check that one out but I just feel like these Catrice drops give your skin that same kind of sheen but without the intense shimmer or glitter it's just a really beautiful pearlized glow that again you can use all over your face under makeup you could mix it in with your foundation or just use it as like a spot liquid highlighter it's a really really beautiful product for only six dollars and it's incredibly similar to the drunk elephant also one of the most viral products of the year I would say is the Dior Lip Glow Oil. It's $40, which is insane for a lip gloss, first of all. It is a nice lip gloss, but seriously, it's a lot of money. Yet everybody over on TikTok ended up selling it out. You couldn't even get it for a while. And there have been several very similar products that have come out at the drugstore. But for me, none of them have come as close as the new one from Catrice. So this is called the Catrice Gloss and Glow. These are $6 each. It also comes in a bunch of colors, just like the Dior. And it has almost the same type of applicator. It has that really big, chunky, over size doe foot. And just like the Dior, these have that pH adjusting technology where it'll come out a little bit different depending on the person. And I feel like a lot of the other glosses that were supposed to dupe the Dior really didn't have that. They were just a gloss. And on top of that, I feel like the formula feels almost identical. When I use this Catrice one, I can hardly tell the difference. I would say the biggest difference for me is the scent. The Dior smells like those vanilla mint Tic Tacs, whereas the Catrice one has a fruity, 
like kind of strawberry scent. I actually really like this a lot. I think I actually prefer the Catrice because I'm not a fan of minty lip products. And I mean, yes, the packaging of the Dior is a little bit nicer, but at the end of the day, for me, what matters most is what's on the inside. And the Catrice definitely gets closer than any other brand to the Dior. And Catrice was actually on a roll this year with their dupes. I don't even wanna say it's an exact dupe because I don't feel like this one is, but it's a really similar product at a much more affordable price. So they recently came out with their Holiday Skin Bronze and Glow palette, and it reminded me of the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. So the Charlotte Tilbury one is $68, and the Catrice is only seven bucks so that is a $61 savings, it's incredible. And both products contain a bronzer or contour powder and a highlighter. Now, one thing that I will say for the Charlotte Tilbury is you do get a bit more product in here. It's a larger compact. And also the compact is just a lot prettier. It's a nice, heavy rose gold outer packaging. And the Catrice one, to be honest, it looks pretty cheap, but Again, what's inside is actually really beautiful. I feel like the Catrice one also has a super smooth highlighter. And while I wasn't sure that I was gonna love the bronzer in the Catrice one, I think I even like it better than the Charlotte Tilbury. And the reason for that is because the one in the Catrice Compact has a little bit more of a rosy undertone. And I think it just suits my complexion a little bit better. Not to mention the bronzer in the Charlotte Tilbury palette gets hard pan super easily. It's at the point now where I really have to dig my finger in here pretty hard to get any product to show up. And the Catrice one is just so easy to pick up with a brush. And I feel like these powders blend beautifully on my skin as well. So this was actually a surprise. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh, they're trying to dupe that. It looks like such a cheap little chintzy compact, but the formula is actually really, really good. It surprised me a lot. So if you haven't been wanting to spend almost $70 on this, Try this one out. I think you'll be really surprised. Alter Ego also came out with two dupe palettes this year that I thought were really well done and really great. So the first one is the dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nouveau palette, which retails for $55. And the Alter Ego one is called Midsummer. It's $20. And as always, they got the colors exactly right. They really did a great job also at duping the formula. When I was applying these to my eyes, I did a whole video on this comparing the two palettes. And I was really impressed with the performance of the Alter Ego, although I shouldn't be because I've been using their palettes for a while now and they're always great. So I felt like it applied just as nicely. I really couldn't tell the difference off the start. And even after my wear test at the end of the day, the Alter Ego one still looked just as good. So if you haven't checked out Alter Ego, yet, I highly recommend them. They tend to dupe the higher end palettes from brands like Natasha Denona, Anastasia Beverly Hills, and Huda Beauty, which actually takes me to my next one. They also duped the Rose Quartz palette from Huda, and this one was called Coastal. So the Huda palette retails for $69, Coastal was 24. And this one was such a beautiful color story. Again, I felt like when I applied these side by side, the Huda side looked just the same as the Alter Ego. And after a day long wear test, same thing. I had exactly the same results. So definitely check them out if you have your eye on one of these high-end palettes, especially if you're kind of on the fence because sometimes it makes sense to just buy the cheaper option. See how much you'll use it. If you feel like you're really gonna use it a lot and it makes sense to spend the money on the higher-end one, you always can do that in the future. But most of the time, as far as feedback that I've heard from all of you, you end up buying the Alter Ego palette and being really satisfied with it and just not even wanting the higher end one at the end of the day. So I'd love to hear all of your feedback on Alter Ego down in the comment section if you have a chance. Also, Essence released their version of Benetint. They called it What a Tint. So uh, the What a Tint is $4.99. The Benetint is $24. So again, there's a huge difference here. And honestly, they didn't even try to hide the fact that they were duping this product. The packaging looks really similar. The name is really similar. But at the end of the day, I also felt like like these products were really close. 
They can both be used on both lips and cheeks, and they leave this beautiful rosy pinky stain behind. You do have to blend these really quickly because they have a water-like texture that just sinks right into your skin, and if you don't blend it immediately, it's just gonna kind of stay exactly where you put it. But both of them have incredible longevity. In fact, I think the Essence one is even longer lasting than the Benetton, and the reason that I say that is because when I was doing my swatches yesterday for this video, I actually still have those two swatches on my arm. And I don't know if you guys can see, but the darker one over here is the Essence and this one is the Benefit. So let me see if you guys can just, hopefully the camera isn't washing it out, but you can see the Essence one is so much darker. So it's a really long lasting formula and it stays put the entire day. Next up in 2023, e.l.f. came out with their version of Supergoop's Glow Screen. So this is called Woe Glow. It's $14 compared with 38 with the Supergoop. And I actually think they did a really great job on this SPF. I feel like the formulas are really, really similar. The e.l.f. one has a nice, elegant, easy to blend formula for an SPF. It's not white or chalky or thick. And just like the Super Goop, it leaves a really nice glow to your skin. So it's great to just use this as a glowy primer and SPF in one. So I think they actually did an awesome job with this one. I know e.l.f.'s dupes aren't always the best. Sometimes I agree that they're like the high-end products, sometimes not, but I felt like this one was pretty good. Another e.l.f. dupe was their Lash and Roll Mascara, which which I took to be a dupe for Benefit's Roller Lash. Not only did the packaging look really similar again, but the name was kind of a big hint as well. And Lash and Roll is $6 compared with $29 for the Benefit. And I actually did an entire video comparing these two side by side. And I really felt like the e.l.f. held its own against Roller Lash. I thought it gave me really nice length to my lashes, a little bit of volume, but I think it was mostly length for me and also a little bit of curl as well. And I think the best thing at the end of the day is that the roller lash smudged underneath my eye while the e.l.f. one held up really well. So for that reason alone, I ended up liking the e.l.f. version even better. e.l.f. had also released their O-Face lipsticks in 2023. And when I saw these, I immediately thought of the NARS Audacious lipsticks. So the e.l.f. are $9 each, the NARS are 26. So again, it's a huge jump. I felt like the packaging looked so similar. Even the lipstick bullets themselves have the brand logos embossed in them in the same spot. I mean, they were clearly trying to copy the NARS, and I think they did a really good job. I know there's been some disagreement here. I've heard some of you guys tell me in comments that you feel like they're exactly the same and there's no difference. Other people feel like they can tell a difference. I'm one of the people who really didn't see much of a difference at all. I felt like the e.l.f. ones were just as creamy as the NARS. I think they went on really smoothly. They were just as pigmented. I felt like they wore the same throughout the day. I really personally couldn't tell which was which if I put one on one side of my mouth, one on the other side they really just seemed like exactly the same to me. So I thought this was another one of e.l.f.'s dupes that they did really, really well this year. Also back in the beginning of 2023, Benefit came out with their Fluff Up Brow Wax and right around the same time, Milani came out with their Stay Put Brow Wax. And I know that Milani wasn't really trying to dupe the Benefit because they really came out like almost at exactly the same time. And I bought the two around the same time. So I was testing them out simultaneously and the more I did that, the more I realized how similar they really were. So I started using the Benefit on one side, the Milani on the other. I think I even did that in a video at one point. And I was noticing that the formulas felt almost exactly the same. Both have this really soft kind of waxy type feel rather than a typical brow gel that feels a little bit more wet. These are a little bit drier. They kind of softly mold your brows into place without making them stiff or crunchy. And at the end of the day, I actually thought the Milani one held up my brows a little bit better than the Benefit. By then, the Benefit side was kind of drooping down a little bit. So I thought the Milani was an awesome alternative to the Benefit at $10 versus $26. So that's another product I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but I think it's a really good brow wax. Also, I wanna talk about the lipstick that I'm wearing today. It's the Flower Beauty Plump Up Gloss Stick in the shade Toasty. So when I first saw these, I thought they were gonna be duping the Tarte 
Maracuja Juicy Lips because they look like pretty much the exact same packaging. And when I first swatched these, they seemed like they had that same kind of melty texture. But the more I started wearing these, the more I realized they're really not that much like the Tarte. The Tarte ones are thicker and a little bit more gooey and goopy, while these are a little bit thinner on the lips. And I think some people who feel like the Tarte ones are just a little too heavy or too thick might actually prefer the Flower Beauty ones instead. But as I was using these, I realized that they reminded me instead of the Makeup by Mario Plumping Serum Gloss Sticks. So these also have that little bit of a plumping tingle and they have that same really melty texture, but they're not as thick as the Tarte. They feel almost identical to the Flower Beauty ones as you're applying them. I really cannot tell the difference. And as they wear throughout the day, the tingling sensation is exactly the same. And even the shade Bronze Glow, I think is super similar to the toasty shade from Flower that I'm wearing today. So if you don't wanna spend $26 on the Mario ones, definitely check out these from Flower Beauty. I feel like this is another brand that really has amazing products, but for some reason, a lot of people don't talk about them. This is only $12, so you can get two of these for the price of one of these. So I definitely think they're worth it. Another lip product that I thought was not only just a drugstore alternative, but a straight up dupe are these Lottie London Cheeky Kiss lipsticks, and they look exactly the same as the Kaja Heart Lips. So the Kaja are $19, the Lottie London are $7, and first of all, they come in the identical packaging. They use the same manufacturer, clearly, but even the product inside feels pretty much exactly the same. At first, I thought it was gonna be more like a tinted lip balm, but it actually has quite a bit of pigmentation similar to a lipstick. Yet both of these have a really nice creamy feel with a satin finish. It's not too glossy, but it's also not a matte finish. So it's just right in between. And I remember testing these out again, putting one on one side of my mouth, one on the other side, and I couldn't tell the difference at all. I felt like even the colors were really close as well. So this is another product I thought it really doesn't make sense to spend the money on the high-end version. So that was number 25, but I actually have one more to talk about that I just thought of as I was going through this list. It's something that I tested out last week and it's still 2023, so it counts. And that is the Physician's Formula Butter Contour Wand. I thought this was so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand and not just because it's in the same packaging. I know a lot of people will say that something is a dupe because it's in the same package and I don't agree with that. I think a lot of the contour ones we saw coming out this year were not actual dupes for the Charlotte Tilbury, but this one, I thought the color was pretty close. It wasn't identical, but once they were blended out on the skin, I felt like they looked the same. And I also thought that the physician's formula was just as pigmented as the Charlotte Tilbury. And I think others that we've seen in the past are a little bit more watery and go on a little more patchy and sheer. So I was impressed with that. And also when I was applying these, I thought the physician's formula one blended out much easier than the Charlotte Tilbury. And a lot of you guys told me the same thing down in the comments that as you were watching me blend, the physician's formula one just seemed to melt right in while the Charlotte Tilbury one took a little bit more effort. So if you're looking for contour wand in this same type of packaging, definitely check out the one from Physicians Formula. I'm not sure if they're in stores just yet. I know they are available on their website currently, but we should be seeing those roll out into the beginning of 2024. And Physicians Formula, just on a side note, also has these butter bronzing drops, which I think are a dupe for the Drunk Elephant ones, but I'm not sure and I didn't want to include it on this list because I don't have the Drunk Elephant ones and I've never tried them. So I don't want to sit here and say, yes, it's a dupe until I can compare them side by side, but it's a really similar type of product and I definitely enjoyed using them and I loved the bronze glow that it gave me. So it's definitely something to check out and look into if you're shopping Physicians Formula. So. Anyway, guys, I wanna thank you all so much, first of all, for hanging in with me this year in 2023. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. This might be my last video that I'm able to get up this year. So if so, I just wanna thank you all so much for being here. I really would not be here without you. So a huge thank you. And if you're not subscribed yet, I would love to have you going into 2024. So definitely be sure to click that button before you go. And if you have some extra time and you'd like to watch some additional videos of mine, I'll just go ahead and put something right up here for you to check out next. 
Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful new year and I will see you in 2024. Take care guys. Bye.